and good morning to everybody. And we are listening, and uh, it's even stranger for me to speak uh, in front of a non audience, in front of um, um, a screen which uh, never gives me any feedback or um, never claps or never cheers. But I think uh, we have to learn a new normality, and this is a part of this new normality. In this post pandemic uh, period, we have to learn some of the new habits and we have to acquire new methods and modes of behavior. And this online uh, summer university is one type of, of that new normality. As I just mentioned, we have to learn new normalities, just like the European Union has to learn new normalities. And uh, I think it is a, a very interesting period in the history of the European integration, because a lot of events coincide, and this coincidence makes a new uh, period of the, of the European integration, and uh, we have to think of the, the future perspectives of that uh, cooperation at European level. What I will be talking about uh, this morning is uh, how the pandemic shaped the path of the European integration and what can be the answers uh, to that new development. Of course, new developments always happened uh, in the history of the European integration. It started as a peace project, as we know, when uh, in the late 40s, early 50s, some of the most uh, committed um, European politicians decided to make the first steps in the European integration in order to make the whole continent safe and secure, in uh, order to cement peace uh, in this continent after two bloody world wars. And then in the 60s and in the 50s, uh, in the 60s and the 70s, right after the, the first successes, it transformed into an economic project, an economic elite project, which means that the, the first and immediate purpose of the European integration was the single market. And um, everybody worked on how to ensure uh, the cooperation of the member states at uh, European level in order to make a stable and functioning single market which can compete in the global uh, economic competition. And at the millennia, as a result or as a consequence or as a reaction of the, of the new wars, the terrorist attacks, uh, the economic crisis, the migration crisis, um, more frequently was uh, mentioned the European Union as a union of community of uh, communities, the union of principles and values. So now we can talk about a period of uh, a community building, a community building process which is uh, based basically on the shared values, the shared principles, and the shared goals of that community. And this is the main characteristic of this period in the 2010s, 2020s, when uh, we were confronted uh, with uh, several um, aspects of, uh, of um, comprehensive uh, crisis, I would say a world war crisis or, or a global crisis. Uh, which is an economic crisis. We've been living in, in very harsh economic conditions since uh, 2008, when, when the European Union has imported the economic crisis from the United States uh, and uh, still uh, hasn't overcome all the difficulties. We, we remember the, the difficulties of, of Greece or the southern states, the southern member states, uh, who had to to struggle with all these uh, problems of the economic crisis, the high level unemployment, the low uh, level of the education, the low level of competitiveness, and and uh, all the fiscal problems of the of the um, budgetary policies, but also we've uh, been confronted with the migration crisis again, a very important and very serious test 
for the European Union as a community where uh, member states of, uh, of different parts of the European Union set against their positions uh, against each other and uh, generated a, a, a deep conflict not only on economic issues, and that's the very first time when the European integration has to uh, struggle with, uh, with non-economic issues, but, uh, but very important political and legitimacy issues. How to show solidarity? What does it mean? What is the content of, uh, of the value of solidarity and how the member states can pull together or they will diverge or, and they will go apart. Uh, these are the fundamental questions. And now we have a, a quite risky health challenge, the COVID-19 pandemic, which poses new questions uh, for, for the future of the, of the European integration. What are these new questions where, uh, where the European uh, Union uh, has to find uh, new kinds of answers or, or, or old answers in a, in a new formula. Uh, the first one is, of course, uh, about the structure of the, of the European Union. Uh, we can talk about the European Union as, a, as an embryonic federal state, as the usual the federalists put this problem, and they can talk about all the downsides and all the liabilities of the European integrations as a result of the lack of a federal state uh, at European level. However, we know that um, it's almost an impossible uh, mission to, to fund a federal state with such, uh, such a divergent uh, national cultures, the languages, all these uh, important aspirations of the national and regional communities, which uh, sometimes even pose serious questions and challenges to the, to the nation states, to the member states itself. But it can be uh, a real option for the future. So the first question is uh, the structure of the EU. Is the European Union federal enough? Or uh, the problem is that the European Union is still not federal enough. On the other hand, uh, there is the, the other powerful camp which uh, defines the European Union as a, or the purpose of the European integration as a seamless economic cooperation. For them, all these new challenges uh, coming from the fact that the EU, even now, goes beyond this natural border and uh, tries to build up a federal state. For them, the European Union is basically a single market and uh, um, all these uh, characteristics and all the tasks performed by the European Union is restricted exclusively to this single market. So for them, the COVID-19 pandemic is not a topic of the European integration, but uh, it is a, um, a problem, a challenge uh, of the member states. That's why the first reactions of, of the member states were to close the borders, to, to make their own societies safe, and to, to restrict uh, every channel of communication among the member states. What is the position of the, of, the, of the EU institutions? Of course, the European Commission uh, supports the idea of the, of the federal Europe, or at least uh, the European Commission tries to make its best to, to, to promote uh, the idea of a closer cooperation, just as it is embedded in the Treaty of the European Union, to promote the idea of, of a closer union. While, on the other hand, the Council, at least it seems, uh, promote the idea of, uh, of a close cooperation, possibly a close economic cooperation of the member states. So when we talk about the, how to handle the post-pandemic uh, situation, uh, we can draw two main uh, avenues for, for the future of Europe. One uh, is the is the close political cooperation, which puts uh, the, the emphasis on the development of new policies 
um, represented by the European Commission and some of the member states, probably the most heavily uh, hit uh, South, Southern Europe, South European uh, member states, for instance, Italy and Spain, who are uh, going for uh, euro bonds, uh, going for uh, a new recovery uh, fund, uh, heavily subsidized by by the frugal for the northern western uh, countries of the European Union. And on the other hand, there is another avenue, uh, which is uh, which makes the the future of uh, of the European Union basically. Uh, uh, business of the member states. They say that we have to, it is true that we have to make a, a closer cooperation, but at the same time, we must not go beyond the borders and the lines of the member states' competency. And I think, uh, however, this, uh, this problem, this, uh, this conflicting uh, views have always been a part of the thinking of, of the future of European integration. But now we, uh, we reached a, a fork, a turning point in the history of uh, the European integration. Because now it is quite clear that if we want to handle uh, global pandemics and uh, COVID-19 is just one of the uh, of the series of the of the pandemics possibly in the end of the future, we have to give um, um, a proper answer to those challenges. What we can see now is um, is um, um, a more favorable or more favorable conditions uh, for um, for the first answer, which means um, a closer political cooperation at EU level. First. Does the recovery uh, package uh, uh, promoted by the European uh, Commission, which gives 750 billion euros for, uh, for the member states to help them uh, to recover their economic uh, problems. Uh, 500 billion of them will be grants, and, uh, and that means that uh, it's, a, it's a huge financial support, but at the same time, uh, it's a new beginning of a federal policy or a European policy for helping and supporting the member states' economies. On the other hand, there is a new uh, initiative coming from Denmark and uh, supported by Belgium, France, Germany, Spain and Poland. So all the stakeholders coming from different regions uh, of, the, of the EU which uh, can easily make a winning coalition in the European decision-making procedures, which uh, initiates a health policy at European level, which, uh, which would pool all these uh, research and development strategies, all these uh, health equipment uh, storages and coordination in the epidemic and pandemic informations, uh, which again results in a um, a European level or union level of uh, pooling of information and pooling of, of instruments. That means that uh, the COVID-19 pandemic can be a turning point in the history of the of the policy developments of uh, of the European Union, and we can witness a born of a of a new uh, European policy, a health policy at European level, which emerges the question of uh, the legitimacy of the European Union. If we, if we see uh, a broadening of the, of the uh, policies at union level, uh, we need uh, more commitment coming from the citizens, but also from the political elites. And I think this latter one is the, is the most important, because citizens' uh, commitments and citizens' loyalty uh, is a difficult thing. How to how to attract the citizens to the European uh, project is still not settled issue, but uh, we can generate uh, more elite interest in that uh, respect. And uh, I think that uh, we need uh, more elite commitment uh, in order to develop uh, new policies at union level. Uh, COVID-19 pandemic can open a new chapter in, the, in this respect as well. Um, since Denmark was one of the initiatives, which otherwise is 
not the most federal um, um, member states of, of the European Union. Just the opposite. Denmark is usually promotes ideas of a, of a more intergovernmental Europe. So this initiative can indicate that uh, the member states now find their common interest in pooling their sovereignty in yet another policy area in health just uh, to make uh, their societies uh, safer. And that's why I think that the post-pandemic Europe uh, can be uh, a European Union with a closer political cooperation, which can uh, result in more, uh, more elite interests and also higher level commitment of the citizens. So our Europe is now our responsibility. We have to build up uh, new communities and more committed communities at European level in order to precede the outbreak of the new pandemics or if it's already outbroken, then we have to preclude jointly and with uh, pooling uh, our efforts and, and our instruments at union level. I think it's quite clear and all the member states will, uh, will support this idea. So I hope that in this new chapter of the history of the European integration, we will see a stronger and uh, more cooperative EU, which helps the member states to tackle all these challenges and also helps the European citizens to find a, a better future on the continent. Thank you very much.